Hare Krishna. What's in the name? Everything's in the name. I remember back in the days, I went to this um pool hall gambling spot around my way. It's closed now, but this was like in the in the nineties. I used to go there to play pool. I wasn't I was never really a big gambler. I don't gamble. I, it's just never been my style. You know, I used to play scratch offs or whatever, but now I don't do none of that. It's just it doesn't appeal to me. The anxiety is not worth it. Like for example, so many people are crushed right now, you know? I know how it feels to invest your little five dollars and your ten dollars in your little lotto. And you thinking you're gonna get that half a billion jackpot and you're actually planning a life of wealth and luxury. So many people fell for it and they built up all this anxiety and yeah, met this lotto man, I've been praying to God, I've been giving extra charity, whatever. People do whatever to make a, a business arrangement with God. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I'm gonna do this, God, and you do this for me. That's called business, that's not devotion. You doing business, you oh, you want to do good deeds, you want to help the lady with the baby carriage on the train because you want to hit the lotto or you want to live a good life. That's what they call, um, I think that's what they call poverty, poverty marga. There's poverty marga and nivriti marga. One is the path of if I do right, then good will happen. And then there's a path where you don't really engage in any material based on um, activities for the sake of receiving something you just do what you're supposed to do as a sense of duty but anyway let's get back to the names right so i went in the barber shop i mean i went inside the um the gambling spot i want to play pool so the dude who was running the gambling spot i'm not going to name him you know what i'm saying because he's very well known dangerous man by the way but i never had no reason to fear him because one i wasn't running the streets i wasn't in the street game and I just never really attracted attention from, from the killers and the extortionists and all of that because I've always been a working guy. So I never had no drug money that I had to defend. I never had no corners or blocks that I had to defend. So I didn't have to worry about him. But this day, I go up to him. I say, yo, take this $5. I need change. Boom. So he's standing at a pool table. He doesn't look at me. He takes the $5. Anyway, the dude took a shot. And he missed or he hit. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I just wanted $5 change. He said, yo, you just lost your $5. You just bet $5 on this table. I said, nah, I didn't bet $5 on this table. I came and that was my last $5 too. I was like, yo, I came here just to get change. You know, I don't have nothing to do with that bet. And he insists. He's like, yo, you know, you put your $5 on when I called for the bet. I was like, yo, I didn't come here to bet on your thing. I came here to play pool. Long story short now, this is the moment of truth because I'm realizing this dude is not going back down. And he was well known in the streets. You know what I'm saying? A real tough dude. Real allegedly killer, whatever, whatever, whatever he was. Extortionist, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? The point is, I said to myself, hmm, this dude is trying to take my five dollars. If I stand up to him, I'm going to have to fight I might win, I might lose, might even get killed, or I might have to kill. So this is what I'm thinking in my head, like, all this is going through my head while he's fronting on my little $5. I'm like, yo, I might have to fight this dude, really. Or I could back down. I said I could back down, which wasn't a problem for me at the moment, but I said, man, if I back down for this $5, these dudes is going to eat me like food. I won't even be able to walk my streets no more because... Once they see me coming, they know. There goes the Vic. He's, yo, take whatever you want from Caprice. You know what I'm saying? Because he ain't going to fight back. So I had to take a choice. And I said, you know what? I said to him again, I said, yo, now I'm starting to get tight. But I'm controlling my emotions because I know he's a live wire. I said, yo, you see that $5 I just gave you? That has nothing to do with your bet. I just want my $5 in quarters so I could go and continue minding my business. Homeboy still didn't even look at me. Didn't even look me in my face, you know what I'm saying? And he says to me, you know what, Caprice? First of all, I was shocked that homeboy knew my name because me and him never spoke before that moment. He said, you know what, Caprice? The only reason I'm going to give you this $5 is because word on the streets is that you're an honest man. Yo, you want to hear the angels sing hallelujah? <laughs> 
word inside of me i was like wow like you know usually in the streets people don't have nothing positive to say about the next person it's usually negative based that's that makes news tmz suge knight running over a car by the way suge knight you're dead wrong for that your name's really gonna be sugar in a minute yo check it right yeah so you know bad news makes the news i wasn't expecting to hear from an illest gangster thug that my name represents honesty on the streets this was years ago before krishna consciousness so it just lets me know that your name your reputation travels ahead of you now there's a point where we fight for our name to be recognized for sake of our false ego for sake of our accomplishments how many women you might have slept with how many cars you drove how many whatever you know there's so many materialistic goals that we could achieve so often we fight for name and fame and reputation but there comes a time when your name has to represent much more than your personal and temporary accomplishment. And with that said, you know, I'm just saying everything's in the name. When you receive a divine name, please try to live up to that name. If your name is Amani, then live in peace. If your name is Imani, then live in faith. If your name is Sue Darson, then make sure that when people look at you, they will see Sue, something good, and Darshan vision you know what i'm saying you want to see a good vision when you look at somebody named sue darshan somebody named narsimha dave you want to see the lion conquering lion of judah conquering lion of the spiritual and material world he who smashes demons and protects the devotees you want to see a protector a warrior so live up to your name because that's really all you got and with that said i want you to research a word called astronomy hmm. this shows you how everything is really connected to ancient Kemet, ancient Africa, you know, this word astronomy. Astronomy is the science of the stars. Its sister science is called astrology, which is called the pseudoscience. But how, how it really works is you have two sides of your brain. So ast astronomy would be the left brain science and astrology would be the right brain science because astrology deals with not so much abstract, but um, creativity, it deals with the hidden, it deals with the unseen, it deals with ambiguous terms or ambiguous energies and how things mix and combine. Whereas astrology is a more of a linear, straight science. The sun is 93 million miles from the earth. And by the way, speaking of 93, the 93rd attribute of Allah is Anur, which represents the light. And the sun, and the sun is 93 million miles from the earth. By the way, if you... Up to this present point in the creation of this universe, if you could stack up all of the bodies that you've ever lived in, it would reach the sun, one on top of the other. The turtle bodies, the giraffe bodies, the woman body, the male bodies, the kids bodies, the giant bodies, the snake bodies. If you could add up all of those bodies, it would reach to the sun. Just an interesting tidbit, tidbit of information, 93 million miles worth of bodies. I think it's time to end the cycles. So. Astronomy, astrology. Astronomy deals with the word Ast or Aset. Aset is the goddess of the throne, known in the Western and Roman world as Isis. So whenever you see a hieroglyph, not of a regular chair or not of a regular seat, but a throne, the throne upon which the Messiah sits upon the lap of the Madonna on, <laughs> Madonna and child, the original suckling breast giving nourishment to the kings of the earth that is isis ast ast ra ra is the god of the visible sun he represents the sun planet ast ra nomi egypt was separated into something called gnomes or if you want to take it to the sanskrit language astra nomi nomi namo namaha and we say namo namaha whenever we're giving praise or obeisances to what you would call a superior being, your superiors. In actuality, everyone is your superiors because you have no idea what a person has done in their previous incarnations and what kind of blessings they're about to come into. All right? You have no idea what kind of blessings people are about to come into. So, everyone, you treat them as your superior because you have no idea where they'll be tomorrow. And this also brings me back to when I worked at Phoenix House. A lot of the clients, I was a welfare liaison for a couple of years, 
And a lot of the clients didn't like how I moved, but they respected how I moved because they wanted to bribe me. They wanted me to let them meet up with whoever and take care of whatever kind of transactions. And I treated one and all the same way because I was scared of losing my job. Yeah, but also because I'm a man of honor, meaning I know how quickly places could change in life. I know that today you could be my boss and tomorrow I could be your boss. So I said to myself, man, these clients, they ain't always gonna be drug dealers. They ain't always gonna be drug addicts. Some of them might really move up in this world. And with that said, I told them, I said, listen, what if one day you're owning a business and you remember me and I come in there looking for a job and I was the welfare liaison who let y'all do what you want, smoke what you want, do, you know what I'm saying? Who just didn't have no discipline or order. You're gonna remember that when it's time for me to fill out that job application. So I'd rather be known as a man of integrity than a man who will bow down to please you, a stranger who I ain't never gonna see again. You know what I'm saying? So point being, your name is everything. We're not talking about name, fame, or building up reputation for yourself because remember, Krishna is the source of the six opulences of which wealth, fame, renunciation, um, strength, wisdom, beauty, all of these things combine to a, an unlimited capacity in Krishna. So if you see somebody with great wealth, they getting that from Krishna. You see somebody with great fame, they, so there's no question of surpassing or equaling Krishna in fame. So all of these seekings, these vain seekings of name, fame, reputation and all of that is vanity because you can't be the, the, the highest at it anyway. So all I'm saying is, Uphold your name for the sake of one, what your name means, and two, for the betterment of yourself and the civilization around you. I just wanted to share that. So the name of this video is called What's in a Name? Uphold your righteous name. It is easier to keep your body clean than it is to keep your name clean. Hare Krishna.